Good morning. Welcome to West Monmouthshire. I thought I'd come out and pay a visit. Generally because the weather forecast is good. Bit of sunshine. It's going to be a bit warmer than it has been. And there's very little wind up here. And uh, I'm no wind player. So I can only come here when it's not windy. So if you're like me, you've had very little play this winter, very little practice, then you're probably shooting some high numbers. So I've played twice at Gloucester, an 85 followed by another 85. I didn't film that day because it was too windy and uh, I'm worried about the cost of this stuff when it gets blown over. Poor old Dave at 4 to 4 Golf, he had his gear blown over and uh, it fell face forward onto the lens, it bust the lens. So he's probably got a £250 bill now for a new lens. So that's why I don't film when it's windy. So if you haven't played much and you haven't practiced much, you, you've probably got a number of faults. Now before any of us can go running off to a golf pro and uh, get ourselves fixed, we need to put some dots on a graph. We need to find out what our faults are. Because the first question you're likely to be asked is, what's your bad shot? And at the moment, my bad shot is everything. It's going left, it's going right, I'm thinning it, I'm fatting it. I'm doing everything wrong. There is a technical term for this. It's called, can't hit a cow's ass with a banjo. Let's get on the first tee and put another dot on the graph and see if we can figure it out. Although, I've had a practice session and it's a little bit warmer today, so there's every chance I might actually swing a bit better. There's only one way to find out. Let's get out there. So as you can see, we're playing off mats which are somewhat forward. But with the wind today, I need all the help I can get. That'll do. Well, that'll do for starters. Flag is back left on the shelf. This is as hard as it comes. Ooh. With a skinny little contact like that, it's into the bank and back again. Now, as you can see, I've got to come up this step, but the step is at a funny angle to me. So I've got to aim much further to the right than you would imagine. Still, it's nice to put a par on the card to start with. Back into the breeze, and I need to hit a solid one. But I'm a little out of the habit of getting over the golf ball. So I'm struggling to get comfortable on some of these shots. And when you're not comfortable, because you haven't done it for a while, inevitably the result isn't too pretty. So whilst the score is important today, what's more important is how am I hitting it? That was thin, so I've come up short, and I'm under pressure to try and make a par. Yeah, so that's a long way short. Now, the thing you'll notice today is a lot of the flags are tucked away round the edges of the greens. And I'm guessing this is to uh, stop people walking all over them. Personally, I think it's a little counterproductive. Par 5 third, here's where we get up onto the hilltop proper. But that isn't going to do it. In fact, I can hardly see where that's landed.
you know, uh, confidence is everything in golf. If you think you can do it, you're right. If you think you can't do it, you're right. Not a pretty swing, but uh, with the wind going a different way from this tee box, I felt more confident. One thing you'll notice today with this wind is that I'm not putting the ball in the air. There's a number of shots I would normally throw up with a sand Bad. wedge, and I'm playing it along the ground either with a pitching wedge or a nine iron. I think that's the way to go today. Keep the ball on the ground. That is way right. Well, the lie isn't great. And I've got water to get over. So I do have to club up here. And it's still short, but at least it's dry. That's all you can do in this kind of weather, is to play ultra safe. So that five iron has gone about 140 yards. And that wedge has probably gone about 140 yards too. But we've always got a putter. Look at where I'm aiming with this 9-iron. This describes adequately how much wind there is. And there isn't really a lot I can do about it. It is far too strong to try and hold it up, so you've got to go with it. Does this count as a putt when it's from off the green? Not pretty, but it's a three going on the card. Well that drive has gone absolutely nowhere. I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing. But did I ever know what I was doing? I've walked forward about 70 yards to get a view of the green and then I've come back and kind of like forgotten what part of the hill I'm supposed to be aiming at. So this is wrong. Very wrong. Well then guys, not going so well is it? I just don't feel comfortable over the shots, especially with the wind coming out of an odd direction. I haven't been up here often enough to figure out what the prevailing wind is. It's always been a different direction when I've come up here. Greens are pretty good, especially when you're considering a week ago, they were under snow up here. Yeah, under snow. Obviously we're playing a long way forward and so it's getting a little easier for me to actually make a score. Another reason for coming up here was so I wouldn't be intimidated by trees. But instead of being intimidated by trees, I'm intimidated by wind at the moment. <laughs> anyway, soon make the turn and head back to the clubhouse. So the short par four, the tee is all the way forwards here. That tee looks a little high. 
that T was definitely too damned high. Can't wait to get back onto the real T boxes and then I can no longer use that excuse. And yes, that was that nasty word. But we've always got a wedge and a putter. There's the wedge. And there's the putter. It's funny how we always say when one part of our game starts working, another part of our game stops working. In my case today, everything isn't working. The only thing working is the putter and one or two chips. And it just goes to show that it is the short game that makes the score, not the long game. A little seven iron runner down the hill. I thought this was going to bounce right, but it just didn't. So it's finished off the edge of the green. And here we go again for yet another little up and down par. John, I've had this putter since 1990 and I'm never going to get rid of it. Well then, that's the nine done. And it's fair to say that uh, I got some serious problems right now and the putter is saving my bacon, which um, it's always a good thing, isn't it? It's always good to have at least one club in the bag that works. Ah, oh dear. Well, at least I can sit up here and enjoy the views for a bit. And of course behind you, way up there on the hill, is the highest tee box in the UK. Can't wait to get to it. Perhaps I'll even hit it straight on that tee box. <laughs> well the par 3 is a long way forward today. But when you've got a backswing that looks like that, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a painful experience. And sometimes, no matter how hard you try, the wedge and the putter will not save your bacon. course you've got to get it to the hole haven't you par 5 11th another catalogue of errors and a putt That was a bit wet. Well, 
the flags on the bottom level. So the plan here is quite simple. Take a sand wedge, hit it beyond the flag up against the bank and have it come back. Well it did trickle back a little bit and it left me one of these again. Hole is looking as big as a bucket. Number 13, par 5 up the hill. This is going to be a bit of a slog today. Well, you just know what's coming now, don't you? Another par. Thanks to the putter. Although, there was a birdie chance there. Well, we made it up here again. Hope the wind is not ruining this. So, obviously, you and I have probably got some serious issues. I think I've, I've played less than once a week golf since the middle of October, so hardly surprising, is it? The only difference between you and I is that I can look back at this video and see what's going on. And then I can go and look at my teaching videos that I've got on YouTube, the ones I had from Matt, and see if I can jog my memory as to how we fixed this last time. But there's only one sure way to fix it. And I'll start playing golf again. Now there's plenty of time after work now to play nine holes. But it's rained every single bloody day. So I haven't had that chance. And neither has anybody else. Yeah, you can't help looking around at the views when you're up here. Right, let's go back down to the mat. The mat isn't up here by this tee box. I mean, I haven't even brought a club with me. Let's get back to the bag and finish it off. Well, the plan down this hill is very simple. Aim left, play it short, and get a bounce on. And it does all of that with the help of the wind. And if you need reminding to take the damn flag out, here it is. That was in. That was in. Yeah, if that flag hadn't have been in. I'd bet the house the, the ball would have gone in. Right, 15, not very far to go. This one's down the wind. So we're going seven iron here and hopefully we can bounce onto the green and hang on to the green. And hanging on to the green is all we managed to do. Just to prove that I'm human, here we go. If there's one hole and one tee shot, I don't think I'll ever grow tired of playing. It's number 16. And if you haven't seen any of the earlier videos, the green is 
way, way down there. The map is considerably forward, so it's just a six iron. With the wind off the left though, it didn't matter how much I aim left. That ball was gone and there was nothing I could do about it. Well at least this one's down the wind and this is yet another hole that I would never ever grow tired of playing. In fact I think if you extend it a bit for the pros you could plonk this down on any open course and it just wouldn't look out of place. Not with this heavy rough and these banks and a small clover leaf green and I wish I had to hit that there's been a few putts today I think would have dropped if I'd hit them hard enough. Well, one hole to go. Made a couple of pars there on the par threes. You know, there's, there's one thing about having a big fault. But that's when you fix it, there's a big improvement. It's far easier to fix when you're shooting 10 over your handicap than when you're shouting, shooting just the one over your handicap. Anyway, I'm thirsty, I'm gagging. Can't wait to get in the bar. Let's get on the 18th though. Ta-ra! Well, just after I hit this shot, I get a shout from the clubhouse saying, get out the fairway and get in the rough. I kind of like scratched my head a bit. But then I realised that winter rules up here mean literally that. Pick your ball up out of the fairway and drop it in the rough. Fortunately today, I think that's only the second fairway I've hit. So I've picked the ball up which was just short of the green and dropped it way over here. I think I've dropped it further away. So inevitably, I'm going to finish with a bogey. But only thanks to my putter. See you in the next video. Cheerio.